Welcome to this video about biomechanics. We'll be talking about the structure and function of muscle in preparation for how talking about how it gives rise to force. I'd like to thank Daryl Thalen at the University of Wisconsin-Madison who put together the first draft of these slides several years ago. Before we start talking about muscle, it's important to note that when we're talking about muscle, we're actually talking about you. And uh, muscle tastes delicious. So it's important to bear that in mind. From an engineering point of view, Muscle is also fantastic. It can be modeled as a motor, and it has a lot of different structure or functions based on where it is in the body. Muscle has a hierarchical structure made of actin, myosin, titan, groups arranged into sarcomeres, which are arranged into myofibrils, which are arranged into fibers, which are arranged into fascicles, which are arranged into the whole muscle. And you've watched a video already about the structure of muscle and how it contracts the actin, myosin, cross bridging. Under a microscope, muscle has this banded pattern where you have the I band and the A band making up a sarcomere, kind of a muscle length, and then the sarcoplasmic reticulum where the calcium comes from. And if we look at a transverse cross section, so cross the length of the muscle, you'll see this helical pattern where you have thick filaments that are the dark circles, thin filaments, which are the smaller circles, and then the cross bridges, which are the lines between the two. And you'll notice that each thin filament has two cross bridges, uh, one to the thick filament on either side. So the sliding filaments generate force, as you've seen in other videos. To start with, the myosin globular heads bind to the actin to form a cross bridge. That cross bridge rotates to pull the actin towards the center of the sarcomere, the M region. The sarcomere then shortens, so the distance between the Z-discs or the Z-lines reduces, which leads to excursion and force generation of the muscle, which is the fundamental contraction principle of muscle. The primary purpose of muscle is to generate force. On a molecular structure, what's the force of a myosin head? How much force do you expect one of those generate? So here are some typical values for muscle to it'll enable you to estimate that. One, muscle tissue produces about 30 newtons per square centimeter, no matter where it is in the body, no matter what kind of tissue it is. It's about what it's capable of producing. Fibers have an average diameter of 50 microns, though they range in diameter from 10 to 80 microns. A fiber has 2,000 myofibrils, and a myofibril has about 1,500 myosin thick filaments. Each thick filament has about 180 myosin molecules. So we'll do this exercise in class where we estimate the force of a myosin head, but in the meantime, here are some questions to consider. How many fibers are there per square centimeter? How much force does a fiber generate? Finally, how much force does a myosin head generate? If you can answer that series of questions using unit conversion techniques, you can come up with an estimate of the head of the, of the force generated by the head of a myosin fibro. But how would you compare that to an actual measurement? Myosin heads are tiny. So scientists have relatively recently come up with a te technique to do this by using laser traps to measure the force of a cross bridge. Photons have momentum, and so therefore they can be used to create force. A focused beam of photons can be used to create force, measurable forces on very small molecules. So a beam of laser light is focused through a microscope objective lens. And then at the focus, you can trap and hold cells or beads if you've coated them with something like fibronectin to, to hold them in place. And then you can use this as a force transducer to measure how displaced the cell or bead is from the center of the beam, how far down it is. So Feiner et al. in 1994 used a technique like this to measure the bond force between actin and myosin. And so, um, Using a, a technique like this where they had a platform and an actin filament and then two different traps on either side going to detectors. You can see the schematic up here in the top corner. Um, you have myosin heads, or an actin chain and a myosin head there where on the platform so that you can create and measure the force. And they found that there's an average force of about four piconewtons. Uh, between the actin and myosin during a contraction. They also found that the duration of the actin-myosin interactions was about three 
to seven milliseconds. And the power stroke was driven by a strained linear elastic element with a stiffness of approximately 0.4 piconewtons per nanometer. They got a force that looked like this, or a graph that looked like this, which is basically a pretty straight line. So it's saying that the force is constant over the duration of the interaction. In the next video, we'll be talking more about how you generate a muscle contraction. I'll see you then.